Tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto katoa. Hello and welcome to you all. I invite you to continue your explorations of digital ethics in portfolios, which is this year's theme of ePortfolio Forum, with this presentation. Yesterday, and also earlier today, we already had a number of presentations and discussions around digital ethics. It is fantastic to have these conversations, not just here, but also in the wider global community. And it's great to have these colleagues in the forum here today as well. Because these conversations are important, ABLE, the Association of Authentic, Experiential and Evidence-Based Learning, set up a task force on the topic last year after having had a collaborative session and discussions at its annual meeting. The result from the first year of investigation is a set of 10 principles that the task force published earlier in the year. These principles are grouped into three different categories, institutions, e-portfolio creators, and platform providers. Each principle follows a common structure for consistency. It includes the principle itself, an abstract, several strategies that can be used successfully to adhere to the principle, scenarios that exemplify how you might encounter it, and not to forget references. The platform that we use in the task force to make the principles available is Scalar. It allows us to set up and show connections between principles repurpose content and also visualize the connections in a few different ways. Now, let's take a look at the principles themselves. In some cases, I will use examples from Mahara to illustrate some of them. When you review the principles, ask yourself how the platform that you use supports you and your students in adhering to them. Principle one support. I think we all agree that it is vital that portfolio initiatives are supported in order to make them a success. The support does not have to come from just one campus partner, but should also involve others like the library, the writing center and the Office of Accessibility. Principle two, promote awareness. We cannot assume that students know about digital ethics when they start their portfolio journey. Instead, Lecturers and staff are responsible to make students aware and help them navigate the space by providing examples and teaching about copyright, for example. Principle three, practice. Practice takes you to mastery and so also in the portfolio space. In the beginning, it may be difficult for students to select the best appropriate evidence, reflect or give constructive feedback. With enough practice, they will become more comfortable with it. Principle four, respect author rights and reuse permissions. That applies to portfolios, no matter whether they are shared publicly or privately. A platform can support portfolio creators by making it easy to attach a license to a piece of evidence. Principle five, access to technology. Be mindful what devices are required for students to access the portfolio and ensure that, uh, they, uh, that those who do not own an appropriate device themselves can have one available through their institution. Principle six, privacy. Portfolio authors should always have the right to decide with whom they want to share their portfolio. In Mahara, everything is private at first and authors need to consciously decide with whom they want to share one or more of their portfolios. Principle seven, content storage. This principle highlights the right of authors to ask where their data is stored and who has access to it. It touches on the responsibility of the authors to know what they are agreeing to when they accept terms and conditions and privacy statements. Principle eight, cross-platform Capability, compatibility. While it should be a given today that portfolio platforms work across devices, this principle does need to be taken into consideration when an institution reviews the implementation of a particular platform. 
principle nine, accessibility. And accessibility is one of those reasons. Accessibility is constantly is constantly evolving area. And in New Zealand, for example, one in four people have permanent disabilities. In Mahara, we do not deal with accessibility separately, but build it right in. And last but not least, principle 10, consent for data usage. This topic had come up a fair bit as well over the last couple of days. Can students delete their data? Is their privacy of personal information ensured at all times? Does the platform comply with university and other relevant regulations? These are a lot of principles to take in, and the information is very condensed and geared towards practical implementation. Many principles overlap, and it is up to each institution and its members to decide what is important to them. And the work of the task force is not yet done. We embarked on the second year that will investigate further topics that we have not yet tackled at all, or that could benefit from a deeper investigation. So watch out, watch out for mid 2021. Until then, we welcome your feedback. So now over to you. What is the biggest digital ethics portfolio question that you have right now at your institution? Take a few minutes to think about that, consult the principles and other resources to help you find answers.